Today I wanted to discuss some of the recent discoveries and I guess some of the recent mysteries coming from a very famous star, the star you see right here. This is Vega, one of the brightest stars in the night skies. It's approximately twice as massive as the sun and is about 700 million years old. And so when it comes to this star, some of the most recent observations revealed something nobody expected. And in this case, it's not something that we found. It's actually something that we didn't find and something that was expected. And so, hello info person, this is Anton. Today, let's talk about Vega and discuss the idea behind why Vega does not seem to contain any planets. Even though technically it should, and even though technically we expect planets around most stars. But here I wanted to start with a really brief video clip from the iconic movie Contact. This is Jodie Foster's character, somewhere near the end of the movie, where she basically goes to Vega. And that's because that's where the aliens in this movie are from. And so in this movie, Ellie Airway goes through a wormhole and arrives to Vega to basically discover an enormous amount of debris everywhere and, surprisingly, no planets. And this is really bizarre because it turns out that this is exactly what's possibly happening in real life as well. So completely by accident, this movie was able to predict this several decades before we actually got to observe the star. But I guess here, let's start with the basics. So this is how the star compares to the sun. Approximately twice as large, approximately twice as massive, also twice as hot, but contains a little bit less metallicity, or basically heavier elements, and also much, much younger. It's most likely about 700 million years old, compared to approximately 4.5 billion years old for the sun. But this is not a baby star, and it's already quite developed. And so as a result, not only do we expect it to contain planets, we also expect it to not really contain any kind of a planetary disk. But a while back, in 1984, the observations from the first infrared telescope, IRAS, discovered unusual infrared signatures coming from both Vega and its unusual twin, Fomo Ho. These are two very similar stars, very similar in mass, similar in brightness, and even similar in age, that are also very close to us and are also just as bright. And so here the idea was that maybe these two stars contain some kind of a really large asteroid belt or even something similar to the Kuiper belt, suggesting some kind of a leftover from previous periods of planetary formation. And when it comes to this planetary formation, telescopes like ALMA discovered an enormous amount of protoplanetary disks that all showed very similar features, and even signs of early planets usually visible as tiny gaps between the disks. And in some cases, even planets themselves were visible there as well. And so here it was assumed that Fomo Ho and Vega would essentially contain large planets, but also some kind of a leftover or debris from an ancient disk. Something that resembles the asteroid belt, but something that's just much, much bigger. And that's of course based on a lot of different assumptions from the 90s and early 2000s, where scientists believe that most planets very likely form in a very similar way. But back then we also made a really wrong assumption about something else. We actually assumed that most star systems would have very similar planets to what we have in the solar system. So basically a few gas giants, some rocky planets, some Neptune-like worlds, and of course the asteroid belt. Yet within the last two decades, that view has been proven to be incorrect. In reality, every single star system seems to be more or less unique and does contain a lot of really unusual planets. As a matter of fact, the most common planets are the ones that don't seem to exist in the solar system. So things like super Earths and mini Neptunes. But still, the assumption was that most stars should contain some planets, or at least stars containing enough metallicity, enough heavy elements to produce planets. And so if the metallicity of a star was over 25% of the sun, it was expected to have something somewhere. Whereas if the metallicity was very low, below 8%, it was maybe expected to have either nothing or something similar to a brown dwarf or your typical Jupiter, but maybe no terrestrial planets. And well, in the last few years, we did have quite a few observations of the famous FOMO hole. Here the disk was so easily visible that lots of different observations revealed some intriguing structures. But it was of course the recent observations from the James Webb that were most exciting. Here we finally had additional proof of actual planets and very large dust disks that were previously observed with older infrared telescopes. Here we basically observed several massive asteroid belts extending all the way to the outer reaches of the star system 210 AU from the star 
and at least one planet, differentially confirmed, now referred to as Dagon. This planet was at least three times as massive as Jupiter and basically showed us that a lot of these disks, really massive disks, are extremely likely to form really massive planets. Which is of course something that was now expected from Vega as well. And that's because these two stars are super similar. They both seem to exhibit these infrared signatures, as I mentioned they both seem to have very similar mass, very similar brightness and very similar age. But for years now, the Hubble Space Telescope was struggling to discover anything. Here several observations by the Hubble captured the outer halo disk, basically discovering a lot of small particles that seemed to be no bigger than what you usually find in smoke. Which meant that there was something missing. And so new observations with the James Webb finally gave us a new perspective. And here's what this unusual image looks like. Here we finally got to see additional types of particles inside this unusual debris disk. But intriguingly, the first thing that stands out is that there doesn't seem to be enough evidence for any large planet. Definitely nothing similar to what we observe in other star systems and definitely different from FOMOHO or any other developed systems that are at least a few hundred million years old in age. And so here both Hubble and the Webb presented us with a very unusual view of Vega. This was a bizarre circumstellar disk like we've never seen before. It was surprisingly smooth, surprisingly symmetrical and seemed to contain almost nothing that resembled a planet. Although in this image from the web, you might notice that there is a bit of a ring in the middle. And so this very very small gap might suggest that there could be something, possibly something very very small, only a few masses of planet Earth in mass, at 60 AU away from the star. And what's more, both telescopes reveal something else unexpected. They basically reveal an unusual dust distribution that produces layers that can only be created by the pressure from starlight for millions and millions of years. And that's because starlight pushes away smaller grains much much easier than heavy grains. And so here what we get is a lot of bigger grains on the inside and a lot of smaller grains on the outskirts. And that's exactly what we see with both telescopes. Small grains far away, large grains inside. But once again, no signs of any planetary mass similar to a typical gas giant. Or even similar to Neptune. Here there seems to be no planets more massive than at least six masses of planet Earth. And that's completely unexpected. Mostly because this is a really massive disk and previous assumptions were that these disks should be forming planets left and right. Yet because we see nothing, it suggests that there is a mystery in regards to planetary formation that we just cannot answer yet. In other words, our previous assumptions are once again kind of incorrect. And this was confirmed by conducting additional simulations trying to see what would happen if there was a planet. And so if there was anything really massive, the disk would look entirely different. And so the only way we can explain what's observed here is if we have either no planets or really small planets, similar to planet Earth, but orbiting on the outskirts. In other words, this is just a really bizarre system nobody expected to discover. Or maybe this is not bizarre at all and is actually really common, but we just cannot explain why this star system is the way it is. And interestingly, one major difference between this system and the solar system is just the fact that the dust here is so spread out and so far away. In the solar system, Jupiter and Saturn are basically keeping the dust at bay and usually prevent this dust from moving so far away and more importantly from becoming so smooth. And though obviously there is some dust here and there, usually the result of asteroid collisions or even emissions from Mars, something we usually refer to as zodiacal light, you can learn about in one of the videos in the description. In Vega, the fact that the ring is so smooth and so big confirms there are no giant planets and possibly no planets that are massive enough to influence anything. And that's after 700 million years. Entirely different from FOMOHO, which seems to contain giant planets and a disk is entirely different too. As a matter of fact, FOMOHO has at least three different belts with very distinct features. Here, this is all really smooth and very spread out. It's basically just one large disk. Now because this star is at least 30% metallicity of the Sun, we've always expected some planets here that would have been discovered eventually. Yet right now, as of 2024, we only had hints of planets here and there. Actually one hint is from a paper right here by Spencer Hurt and his team that believe they discovered the planet with a very very short period of 2.4 days orbiting really close to the star. But despite these initial hints, 
Right now there is really no evidence for anything. All of the previous planetary assumptions so far resulted in nothing. And all of the recent papers from just the last few months could not confirm the existence of any planets in any part of the system, making Vega a really strange exception to the rule. Or is this a rule? Basically this is something we assumed before, but we might have been completely incorrect. Maybe some stars just don't have planets and cannot form them at all for reasons we still don't understand. And since typical star systems are expected to have planets in the first 10 million years, if a star system has not formed planets after 700 million years, here we really have no idea how to explain any of this. And more importantly, this disk did not disappear with time like it does in other star systems. It's basically present as if the star is still a baby. And so instead, what we seem to observe is a very unusual, very cold outer belt, which appears to be very similar to the Kuiper belt in the solar system, but extending over much larger regions. But as you can see right here, there's also a much warmer inner disk, which is kind of similar to the asteroid belt, but once again, much, much larger in size. As a matter of fact here, it's bigger than the entire solar system. And while in pretty much all other star systems, the presence of these two features usually means that with time they develop planets. Not here though. Something here is stopping everything. But as I mentioned, there might be a small planet somewhere. Possibly even a terrestrial planet, because we do see this tiny gap. Although here, because it's so far away from the star, it's definitely not in the habitable zone, and so this planet would be super cold. Realistically though, we're not going to know exactly what's happening here for at least a few more years. Until additional observations from Vega or similar stars, we're not going to be able to answer the question of where are the planets. We're not going to know why the disk is still here, or why this disk is so ridiculously large and so smooth, and we're also not going to know why Fomoho, despite similarities, is so extremely different. It's just going to remain a mystery for at least a few more years. And so once we actually have some answers, or someone discovers what's going on here, we'll come back and discuss this in some of the future videos. Until then, check out some of the previous videos on Fomoho discoveries in some of the links in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.